On this episode of Doing the Most, we're going to talk about America's first spirit, Applejack. Homemade brews and various artists, everything from meat to roast. Bake creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most. Let's start off with a basic warning. This video is not a how-to. It is for informational purposes only. Always check your local laws before producing any fermented alcoholic beverage. Let's dive right in. Applejack is an alcoholic beverage made from apples using a method called fractional crystallization. It was popular in the American colonial days because of how easy it was to make, but it eventually declined in popularity when other spirits like rum and bourbon became easier to make commercially. Applejack is, technically, a type of fruit brandy. Applejack was regularly consumed by America's forefathers, including President George Washington, who requested instructions for producing Applejack from Robert Laird. The Laird family still produces a version of heat-distilled Applejack today. So, how is Applejack made? Historically. The name Applejack derives from the traditional method of producing the drink, jacking, the process of freezing fermented cider and removing the ice, which increases the alcohol content. As anyone who consumed alcohol in college likely knows, alcohol doesn't freeze at the same temperature as water. So, you can partially freeze a hard cider and remove the ice, which leaves concentrated alcohol behind. In the olden days, cider produced after the fall harvest was left outside during the winter. As frozen chunks of ice would form, workers would remove and discard them. Alternatively, a cask of hard cider could be placed in the snow. Ice would form on the inside of the cask as the contents began to freeze. Then, one could tap the heart of the cask and pour off the still liquid portion inside. Cider will generally have an alcohol content of less than 10%, so depending on the methods used, the concentrated result can contain 25-40% to 40 alcohol. Of note, one-way freeze distillation differs from heat distillation. Distilling with heat allows the distiller to control how ethanol and other products of fermentation are separated, some of which can contribute to hangovers. In jacking, the substances remaining after the removal of the water include not only ethanol, but also methanol, esters, aldehydes, and fusel alcohols. So, if you're not properly hydrated, Applejack can leave you feeling icky the next morning. So, how is jacking cider done in a modern home? Typically, you would begin with a very high alcohol content apple cider, which can be achieved by fermenting a cider and then step feeding it granulated sugar until the yeast hits alcohol tolerance, using a yeast like EC1118 or 71B that has a high alcohol tolerance. Once the hydrometer reaches near 1.000, the home brewer can feed the yeast granulated sugar to keep the yeast going. This is how you can easily take an apple cider that starts out less than 10% and drive it all the way up between 18 and 20% alcohol. Once that process is complete, the home brewer allows the apple cider, which is now more of an apple wine, to age for an extended period of time, generally from nine months up to two years. Once that apple wine has had time to age, it is racked off to get a clean rack into a bucket. An airlock wrapped in plastic wrap is placed in the grommet to act as a stopper. The liquid level is marked and then divided by three. One third of that liquid level is about the upper limit that the home brewer will be able to jack the cider, thus concentrating the cider down to one third of its original volume. The bucket is placed into a deep freeze and allowed to freeze for 24 hours. After 24 hours, the home brewer will use a salad spinner as a centrifuge. Yes, you heard me right, a salad spinner as a centrifuge. A salad spinner is composed of three parts, the inner part that actually spins, the spinner mechanism itself, and obviously the collection vessel. The home brewer will also use a slotted spoon for scooping out the ice. 24 hours is long enough for water ice to freeze in little sheets of crystals. Those chunks full of sheets of ice crystals can be scooped into the salad spinner. And then the home brewer will spin the salad spinner, which slings the applejack out of the ice and leaves the ice behind. The applejack goes back into the bucket and the ice is spun again. The ice can be spun three to four times until it becomes kind of snow white. The ice can actually be melted and used as a brine for pork or mixed with a little simple syrup and some lemon juice to create a nice chilled cocktail. 
The scooping and spinning is performed until minimal ice remains, and then the bucket is allowed to thaw completely before being refrozen for another 24 hours. And then this is repeated over and over and over again until the Applejack is reduced to that one-thirds volume. Once it becomes relatively impossible for ice to continue forming, the Applejack is finished. And then it is bottled like any other homebrew. So how does one use Applejack? Well, the Jack Rose is a lovely cocktail. Some sliced limes, one part lime juice, half a part of simple syrup or grenadine, and three parts Applejack. Stir, 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 and enjoy. It is an incredible holiday cocktail. Lightly acidic, nice and sweet, and a big, bold, robust apple flavor all across the palate. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it, in some part, helped demystify Applejack. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up, and please subscribe for more content just like this. You can follow us on Instagram and Pinterest at doingthemostok, and our website is doingthemost.org. And a big shout out to our YouTube members and patrons who help support the channel. You all are awesome. Until next time, happy brewing.